The names Cal Ripken Jr. and Tony Gwynn will forever be linked. And in 2007, they will be enshrined together in Cooperstown. I know growing up, people used to say, you're too big to play shortstop. And then the first thing I would say is, hey, Cal Ripken's playing short. He's bigger than me. Tony, you know, he's the best hitter by far that I've faced in my career. I mean, the mailman can't be as good as, as uh, Cal Ripken. And Tony Gwynn just, you know, he just hit. He just hit. And he just hit. I mean, anytime we played, you know, ball in the front yard or, in, you know, against the garage or something, I was always Cal Ripken. Nobody I've ever seen better on putting a bat head on a ball than Tony Gwynn. After his first major league hit back in 1982. He's playing for his trails of play. He looks up at the diamond vision, sees this my first major league hit. He says, first major league hit, huh, kid? Yes, sir. First major league hit. He says, congratulations. Don't try to catch me in one night. That same year across the country in Baltimore, Cal Ripken was in his first full season with the Orioles. He finished with 28 home runs and 93 RBIs, good enough to win the Rookie of the Year. Ripken's career had taken off, and so had the streak that would become his legacy. I enjoy playing. I enjoy being the one out there uh, uh, in the lineup. But I figured uh, someone's going to have to play. Nine innings are going to have to be have to be played anyway. I want to be in the lineup. After the 1983 title, Ripken won his first American League MVP award. He hit 318 with 27 homers and 102 RBIs that season. His 211 hits would remain his career high. The following year, Gwynn would reach the first of his two World Series, win his first batting title with a 351 average, become the first Padre to collect 200 hits in a season. And I reached my goal. Well, I'm, I'm happy about that. I set this out at the start of the season, and then I've reached it. And but now I got to go on. You know, you can't live on what you've done yesterday. You have to go out and prove yourself every day. And every day there was Cal Ripken. He played in every inning of every game from June 5, 1982 to September 14, 1987, a span of 8,243 innings. As that streak ended, the chase for the unbreakable record rolled on. The link back to another era where people thought when it was a game, when it was simple, when it was just pure. And I think I played a part in that. He wanted to be in there every day. Yeah, he's the, you know, he had the lunch pail mentality. I want to come, I want to play every day. I don't care who's pitching. I don't care how well I'm swinging. I want to be out there. Ripken played in 2,632 consecutive games, shattering Lou Gehrig's mark that stood for 56 years. At the same time, Gwynn was chasing history, hitting 394 during the strike-shortened 94 season. His run at 400 came as no surprise, considering his relationship with the last man to reach that magic number. Me, it wasn't until after that, after my first conversation with Ted Williams in 1992 at the All-Star Game that I, I finally began to make inroads into being who I would consider, you know, the best at just the art of putting the bat on the ball. You're smart. You're well, a smart little guy. And, and you probably weigh as much as I did when I played. You're not little. No. But uh, what do you weigh, 185? Yeah, I weigh. <laughs> uh, what do you weigh? Well, I weigh exactly what I weighed when I saw you last year. I weigh 227. You weigh 227? 227. Holy <laughs> little Mike. <laughs> In their careers, Gwynn won eight batting titles. Ripken won two MVP awards. Gwynn won five gold gloves. Ripken won two. In 1990, a year Ripken didn't win a gold glove, he made only three errors in 161 games. Good for a 9.96 fielding percentage, the highest ever by a shortstop. The offensive part, part came pretty easy, but the defensive part uh, has taken a lot of work. The two would only meet on the same field during baseball's Midsummer Classic. And in those 15 head-to-head -head meetings, they would provide some memorable moments. Here I am, standing on the mound with Ted Williams. And he's throwing the first pitch uh, out to Carlton Fisk. And uh, Ted is standing there and he's saying, you know, Carlton, where the hell are you? I don't, I don't see you. And I said, Mr. Williams, he's right in front of you. Just let it go. The 2001 All-Star Game marked the end of an era. Since Gwynn was not healthy enough to play, it was Ripken's stage from the moment he stepped onto the field. And I just felt like I was running a thousand miles an hour. Can't write a better script than that. You just can't. Wow, this this guy is really going out in style. Unbelievable. Just unbelievable. The game was stopped to allow these two future Hall of Famers to say goodbye. What else? Together. These last 20 years have been 
the greatest ride I, I think you can ever be on. And, uh, it's been a great and fantastic run. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.